on that, you know, I know someone that uh, comes from a very diverse background um, for a number of reasons. And one thing I'll just add for like the, the management out there, the senior leaders out there is when you find those individuals that don't think like you, that think, you know, in a totally different way, maybe don't look like you or, you know, or have the same belief systems as you focus on empowering them because this particular individual invented a completely new technology by just having their management team empower them to be able to do so. So you may find yourself, you know, this, this so I, what I want to say about the diversity issue, right? Cause some people say, oh, let's hire a diversity officer and everything's good. Think of it as a revenue driver as well, right? Think of it in the business aspect of this can really drive revenue. Your company can explode in growth if you just empower people the right way and bring in a diverse team. If you try to do it the old school way, then uh, good luck. I'll, I'll see you in the bankruptcy line, right? So I, I just, it's just a, you just have to pivot your mindset. So even if you're, even if you have a, a very narrow mindset right now for someone maybe watching this and saying, oh, that guy's terrible. How dare he? Uh, the reality is start thinking about your own business though and say, wait a minute here. I need to think as a business owner even and say, this can actually drive a lot of revenue growth if I yeah. do this the right way. So definitely empower those people because you just never know what people are going to come up with. You know, to your point, AJ, you, you never know where the, the next biggest idea is going to come from. And it's probably going to come from someone on your team as long as you empower them and allow them to do what they need to do. Is that an approach that you've, that you've taken with your training? Um, as we're trying to get more people, obviously, to enter cyber is to try to get it into more diver diverse groups to, to be able to expand their reach. Is that something you've consciously done as you've developed new programs or even what you're doing with Rapid Ascent? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's one of the main drivers of the TV show, right? You know, and, and we don't actively advertise that component of it, but if you like actually watch episodes, you'll see very few extremely pale white guys like me. Right. Uh, I the, have, so yeah, I, I can concur. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the reason for that is because oftentimes uh, individuals that, that aren't, you know, fitting the mold of, you know, what, what the, you know, the past or, or current even view of, of, of that people have here in the U S they don't get a chance at a voice. And, you know, this platform, the cyber life in particular, allows them to get their voice in front of literally millions of people globally because there's some kid out there that's going to look at this and say, oh, that person looks like me or talks like me or had a similar, you know, experience as me. And that's going to be the thing that pulls them into IT or cyber. It's not going to be the fact that you're showing them how to spin up Kali Linux or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that stuff's cool, but like there's a lot of people that do that. It's going to be that they need to see someone that looks like them successful in these roles. That's going to be the thing that triggers them to say, oh, I can do that. And, and, you know, so that's an initiative there. And, and of course I do it in the classes, but um, you know, it's kind of, kind of tough to do with a pale white guy on camera to, to do that. But with the show, I can <laughs> bring in guest speakers that have a variety of backgrounds. And again, it's not just a racial thing. There, there's, there are a variety of backgrounds there, experiences, life experiences, et cetera. And all that stuff allows some kid out there 